Kenyans, in the last two weeks, our country has experienced grave acts of lawlessness, widespread violence, looting, and invasion of private property by persons taking advantage of political demonstrations called by the opposition. During this period, lives have been lost, people injured, property looted or destroyed, the economy has suffered and our image as a nation dented. Our security agencies have endeavored to do everything within the law to protect the lives and property of all citizens. Nevertheless, the violence, chaos and disorder continues to distract our national focus of economic transformation. Three Kenyans, among them a police officer, have lost their lives in the protest. More than 400 Kenyans, including at least 60 security officers, have been injured. A police vehicle was burnt to ashes somewhere in Kawangwari, while another was hijacked and commandeered by unruly protesters somewhere in Migori. Two houses of worship were burned down in Kibra, kiosks, supermarkets, and a mortuary were looted. Fellow Kenyans, our country's image and history in the League of Modern Nations has been at stake in the last two weeks. The country's economy has been hit hard at a time when my administration is doing everything possible to salvage the economy from the deep hole where we found it. My administration has instituted solid measures and policies to attract investors and through their investment create opportunities for millions of our young people to realize their potential, amongst many of the other issues that we are doing as government. <clears throat> we cannot, ladies and gentlemen, we cannot allow these efforts to be derailed by acts of violence, chaos, and anarchy. We all have an obligation to respect the Constitution of Kenya. This also includes the respect of institutions established and created by the Constitution. Our country's electoral system and process is anchored on the principles of our Constitution. The Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission conducted a free, fair, and transparent general election on the 9th of August, <coughs> 2022, a poll that was observed by different organizations, both local and international. The Commission declared the results for all six elections conducted and any contestants who were aggrieved by the outcome had an opportunity to present their grievances to the country's judicial system for arbitration. The Supreme Court of Kenya had and determined with finality the 2022 presidential election dispute and ruled on the petitions that were filed by the aggrieved contestants and their supporters. Nevertheless, I have carefully listened to the issues raised by my friend, the Honorable Raila Odinga. In times like this, it is not about who is right or who is wrong. Like Winston Churchill said, I dare, and I dare say, and I quote, courage is what it takes to stand up and speak, but it is also what it takes to sit down and listen. I have always been ready to engage Kenyans of all walks of life, including elected and appointed leaders from across the political divide and the religious fraternity on how to make our country better and prosperous. And in the last six months, I have talked to many religious leaders. I have talked to many elected leaders from across the political divide. My door still remains open for honest, objective, and sincere deliberations based on the rule of law and the Constitution. 
in the reconstitution of the future electoral commission, the selection panel that currently is in office is a creation of the law that was passed by the two chambers of parliament in response to a court decision. The court clearly stated that one institution, and in this case, parliament, cannot dominate the process of establishing an electoral commission at the expense of other institutions that have a role to play in the country's electoral process. However, considering the matters raised by our friends in the opposition, I suggest a bipartisan engagement in Parliament on the reconstitution of the IEBC panel within the parameters of the law and the Constitution. In any case, as a Democrat and guided by the Constitution, I, on the 9th of December 2022, sent a memorandum to the speakers of the National Assembly and Senate requesting the purposive intervention on implementation of the two-thirds gender rule, entrenchment in the constitution of the Constituency Development Fund, Senate Oversight and, gender, um, and National Gender Affirmative Action Funds, establishment of the position of the leader of opposition and the improvement of parliamentary oversight of the executive. And for the record, Parliament has already approved the parliamentary oversight of the executive and shortly cabinet secretaries will be appearing before the House to answer questions. The other items are still um, in Parliament. The IEBC selection panel and the future process of recruitment of its commissioners could as well be part of a conversation leading to constitutionally and legally binding proposals through a bipartisan parliamentary process. In, in other words, I am suggesting that the issues that have been raised by our friends on the matter of IEBC, my suggestion is that this matter can be handled in Parliament by a bipartisan parliamentary process so that we can agree on what it is they have an issue with and we can adjust as is agreed and as necessary. And therefore, in these circumstances and in view of the recent events that led to loss of life, and destruction of property in the demonstrations that have occasioned in our country for the last uh, two weeks, I urge my brother Raila Odinga and the opposition to call off the demonstrations and to give this bipartisan approach a chance for us to take the country forward. Meanwhile, I call on all Kenyans to remain peaceful and law-abiding, and I assure them that the government of Kenya will continue with its sacred duty of protecting their lives and their property, including their businesses. Thank you very much. I can take one or two questions.